Hey guys, you got Crave here, and this is going to be a very niche video, but I took a gamble and upgraded my graphics card or GPU while keeping my older CPU. I'm still using my 4790K, and I decided to get the ASUS Dual 3060 Ti. Now, I know it's an odd pairing given that my Intel processor is almost 8 years old and the GPU came out as 2020 was about to close. I was of course aware that aging tech would definitely hold back or bottleneck beefier graphics cards, but I knew it wouldn't be a complete waste. So let's find out how things are based on the games I tested. This video will be broken down into parts and I'll start off with some information about my system and such. Use the timeline or the description box to get into specific parts that you're interested in. So here's the machine setup or the test setup. Uh, you can see there the processor, the RAM, and all these things. I've also included the different resolutions where I tested the graphics cards. And of course, I also listed there the tool. Now, in addition to the specs you're seeing, I always like to see things as they are in regular use. So my machine has some stuff up while gaming. I've got Discord, some Edge browser tabs, Launcher, Spotify on idle, and all these things while I perform the test. I also did this with two monitors up. Second thing is that I have plans to upgrade the rest of my system around January of next year. So I just wanted some eye candy right now while making sure my frames wouldn't drop as much. Now all the games are consistent between the two graphics cards. There will be no DLSS or ray tracing numbers except when I call them out for a particular game. Now this video is really just meant to see the raw output of somewhat stronger graphics cards paired with an older CPU. And um, two passes per resolution are done unless there's a lot of inconsistency. Now there were some games where I really couldn't figure out the large variances. So I'll just mention them when they come up. And this won't really be an in-depth review. I don't have any other equipment to verify the data, nor will I pretend to be as knowledgeable as say Steve in Gamers Nexus. This video is more of showcasing personal real world numbers while well but i do think that it still might give you some idea if you are in the same boat as me first game is anno and this was really addicting when it first came out the systems and visuals were really just great anyway this really taxed my machine so i thought that it would be a nice test for the gpu change what's pretty hard though is that i can never get any consistent scenes to redo over and over given that there is no option to save in particular points in the game plus the events in anno are pretty much random now as you're noticing for this game most settings are in medium Upgrading my GPU helped, but not by a whole lot. We can see improvements in the minimum frames and the 1% lows, generally noticeable in 1080 and in the ultra-wide space. CPU and GPU usage varied slightly across the test, but neither really maxed out on a consistent basis. Larian Studios was a good pick for continuing the Baldur's Gate series. Their success in the Divinity series echoes in this recent D&D title. Now, BG3 is or in well in, this, in early access and Larian are still making changes and improvements to their game now I think I think it shows in the test that I did or the rest of my system just couldn't have basically kept up and it may be the culprit anyway improvements are very minor it does feel oddly smoother though much like cyberpunk even in lower frames or FPS numbers still it's not what you want to see when you upgrade your graphics card Ah uh, yes, the game that should have been the hit that meant back-to-back -back wins for CDPR following the massive success of Witcher 3. Still an okay game though, but really a very bad experience for our cousins in the previous console generation space. Now, settings here in this game were a mix of highs and a few mediums, but I also set the crowd density to medium as well. We can see the improvements across different resolutions and the gameplay feels much, much better, well basically better. When you look at the CPU usage numbers, I think this is a solid example of a game that shows how the 3060 Ti is gimped by a processor that doesn't have enough juice. Now on the FPS number side, it can improve when you get into less busy areas or places where there aren't a whole lot of people. It can sometimes mean a jump of 15 frames even in firefights as long as it's not out in the open or out in the streets or it's not daylight you can improve the numbers further by using dlss but there's something very off about that so i choose not to use it now in terms of ray tracing it does make the game look so much better but can appear grainy in some parts so i think it might need tweaking overall though i don't think i'll use rt because of the performance hit 
From one cyberpunk game to another, this is the sequel to The Amazing Human Revolutions. Now, it's just too bad that part 3 has been put on hiatus or an, on hold, but if I'm reading this right, Deus Ex is a more GPU-reliant game based on the numbers, and it really just makes full use of the 3060 Ti and even the 1080. Now, for this game, all settings have been nearly maxed out or maxed out, and yeah, there's really nothing much to say here except that the upgrade has been a very good experience. Gears is one of the best third-person shooters out there with a very long history. Now, as mentioned, I used Afterburner in all these tests, but if I were to rely on the in-game benchmark, my setup was always tagged as GPU-bound in all scenarios while having all settings to Ultra. Now, improvements were there in all scenarios, but the ones worth noting were in the FHD or the QHD space. I suppose this is an example of a game where the upgrade isn't as significant. Aloy and her adventures in the post-apocalyptic machine overrun world began on console in 2017, but it was later ported to the PC. Now, it's a pretty good game with some repetitive aspects. Now, the game was mostly set to high with some in Ultra, around two settings in Ultra, and this game is a good example of how the setup affected performance. There was a well, there was more improvement in the higher resolutions as opposed to the standard 1080. Now, the jump isn't significant, but it is there. If you're in busy areas like a town or a city with a draw with draw distance being taxed, you will feel the performance hit. If you manage draw distance or are in areas where it isn't too open, you can add roughly 10 to 15 average frames in higher resolutions. Here we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider. It's a bit of an old game, well, just a bit, but it still looks good even now. With nearly all settings maxed out, the graphics card upgrade is better felt in higher resolutions where we can see the inverse relationship of the GPU and CPU when we add more pixels. If you run the in-game benchmark, it is consistent with the premise of CPU limiting the GPU in lower resolutions. The performance difference between the two cards is more obvious in 1440 and ultra-wide, where the difference, again, like I said, is noticeable. I tested ray tracing in QHD and you basically drop down to the GTX 1080 numbers in the same resolution space. The only difference is that the minimums hover at around 22, while the lowest 1% lows I got around 13. Now that's something you're going to feel when it dips that much. I did find it strange that EA published this, but it was still a good thing because it did prove that single player games are not dead at all. Fallen Order was personally one of the top 3 games of 2019. Now everything was set to epic in the settings for this Star Wars game, and like some on the list, improvements are more noticeable in the QHD and ultra wide areas. One thing to note though is that the gaps between the average FPS numbers and minimums are pretty significant. This change is easily felt when you sweep your mouse across your pad, or which means changing your view. It won't really matter at times even if you already loaded the game area. It's, it's a very strange thing, but overall though, this upgrade or at least upgrading the graphics card in my system did help with the overall experience. I always thought that the cover system in Gears was better than the original Division, but with Division 2, I think Massive Entertainment has done a tremendous job compared to Gears. Now, as before, Division 2 shines in higher resolutions when you have an old CPU and a strong GPU combination. In the graph, most of the settings are in medium in all the tests I performed. Now, I ran two more tests in the QHD space where everything was pushed to high and with a few max settings. I ended up with GTX 1080 numbers in 2560 by 1440 resolution. It was like my results in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but with the lows and minimums not being too bad. To bring it all together, the GPU upgrade has benefits. Is it a viable upgrade? What I did? Yes. In all tests, it really just helped to increase frame numbers, but with varying degrees of effectiveness. It definitely helps if you game on higher resolutions. The next question is, is that, is it an optimal upgrade? Then the plain answer is just no. You can't make full use of the card in all scenarios or a majority of the scenarios unless, again, you game on higher resolutions or you push your image quality settings all the way up. Anyway, the 3060 Ti is just making me excited to upgrade my CPU and of course my motherboard and RAM. I'm looking forward to the early part of next year as I am looking at something pretty strong to replace my 4790K. Thanks for checking this out guys, I'll talk to you soon.